Multi-award winning director Stephen Frears, congratulations because you've added another two BAFTA nominations to already quite, um, quite an extensive list that you've got. Your nomination for directing and miniseries are two of the 12 that this series has received, which is fa fairly ridiculous. It's done quite, quite no, well. No, it should have had 13. The cameraman <laughs> hasn't been nominated. It's terrible. Oh, it's no. Dreadful. OK. So you've actually had um, a strong focus on writing. Yes. It started when I was at Cambridge. And then when I was at Cambridge, I didn't get a job with the television companies, but I got into, I went to the Royal Court Theatre. Well, the Royal Court was a writer's theatre. And when I eventually started working at the BBC a lot, it was a writer's medium. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the names you've worked with at the BBC, Alan Bennett, Tom Stoppard, Stephen Polyakoff, quite an amazing list there. What did your early experiences actually teach you about the craft of directing? Well, particularly Alan was such a brilliant writer. I mean, and such a clever man. What he wrote was so funny and so economical and so observant. You just had to pull your socks up. So would you say that when you do take on a project, the, the writing and the script is kind yes. of the most yeah. important thing to yeah, you? Yes, absolutely. If you don't get the script right, you won't make a good film. So once you have, you have decided on the script, talk us through the stages of your involvement. With, with that project, I mean... Well, then what you start to break it down and you break it down in your head and I tend to do that by uh, casting people. You know, you think, well, shall I cast that actor? Well, if it's that actor, it'll be this. If it's like that actor, it'll be that. So you start to pull it all to pieces and then re re reassemble it. So what was it um, that drew you to a very English scandal? Oh, it was just wonderful. It was, I mean, it, 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 an idiot would have done it. I mean, perhaps <laughs> I am an idiot. It wasn't a very difficult decision. First of all, the story that John Preston told in his book was very, very good and very funny and got the tone right. I remember talking to Richard Ingrams, who edited Private Eye at this time, and he said, oh, that's the one that gets the tone right. So I knew where I was. And then in terms of kind of drawing out these incredible performances by, by the actors, Ben Whishaw and Hugh Grant, they're both obviously nominated for BAFTAs. Well, you, you hire them. So, <laughs> you get good actors. Hugh is like Marlon Brando. He's a method actor. He comes very, very well prepared. He knows what he's doing. He interrogates you, me. Is this right? Is that, you know, he asks very, very considered questions. And Ben Whishaw, what's, what's he like to I work with? I have no idea what Ben Whishaw does, except that he's dazzling. <laughs> Hugh, I understood the machinery. I mean, I understand that kind of light comic acting, and I understand how it can v go into tragedy. Ben was much more mysterious. He's the most adorable man and a wonderful, wonderful actor, but where he comes from, don't ask me. It was a very, very easy job. <laughs> You make it, it was, sound like it was quite an enjoyable job to do. It was do good fun, well. yes, of course yeah. it was a good fun. Hugh is entertaining and good company and Ben is good fun and the script was great and the story was endlessly entertaining. So it was not a great struggle for me. Have there been jobs in your career yes, that were a, oh, a big I've had, struggle? Yes, miserable. Yes, no, I've had misery. But this was very, very enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you're supposed to say that. No, it's all right. We'll, we'll I suffered. I'm sure I suffered for my heart. The time that you started making movies at the BBC was called the golden era uh, of drama and then you moved into kind of British independent films and, and Hollywood and all that and then you came back um, with a very English scandal and you're making TV at a time that has kind of again been referred to as a golden era for, for TV drama. I think there is better writing and possibly more interesting material in television than, on, in, I mean, than in the movies, yeah. Why do you think this shift from storytelling we've come to expect? Because from... the cinema abandoned life and television moved into the vacuum. I mean, what, you could see what it do happening. you mean by that? Well, the, uh, the films I make are more or less about rather odd bits of life. Once you stop making films about life, once you only make films about comic books or whatever it is, there's a whole subject you've left behind. I mean, the American cinema did it. I learned what I know about America largely from the movies, but then they stopped making those sort of films. You've said that you rely on your crew hugely and that crew crews a massive part of kind of bringing production together and but one of the things you do is you do less and less people then say well what bit do you do and i say well i did the thinking which i, I think is probably quite an accurate description crews are now phenomenal the level of talent is very very high i tend to make films about things i know nothing about uh, so when i made liaison i knew nothing about france and i mean i i could understand the humanity of the story 
and I, but I knew nothing about chateau or 18th century balance or anything like that. So everything had to be taught me, and I remember the designer coming in explaining how you should make the film visually. We had a brilliant costume design. I mean, everything was explained to me, and eventually I thought, well, I'll do the bits I can do, which actually was the casting. I'll do, it, I'll do those bits, and other people can do those bits. And I allow other people to fill the gap, because how else will you fill it? In other words, you stop pretending that you're Stanley Kubrick after a time. You stop pretending you know things you don't know. You stop fibbing. So I learned to trust people and to enjoy what they were bringing to it. You like learning, and I suppose you enjoy the not yeah. knowing. So in that sense, the whole thing has been a sort of educational course course for me. So you learn the whole time what it is you're doing. I find that rather interesting. With so many movies and achievements in your career, how do you keep your passion for I find the film material going? because the material interests me. I remember when I got the script of My Beautiful Laundrette. I remember when I got the script for The Snapper. I remember when I got Peter Morgan's script for The Deal. You know, it's just fantastic. It's like taking drugs. <laughs> Uh, your work is very varied, but do you have any advice, I suppose, for young directors who are just breaking into this industry? What, what, what would you say to them? Take any job that you're offered. You have to work. The only way you learn is by doing it. Sandy McKendrick said, film direction can't be taught, it can only be learned, which is a very wise, it's so direct. And eventually you become more discriminating. And if you do things that are good, people will go on hiring you and eventually you find what you like.